Welcome to Marine Tech Talk, a podcast about how Teledyne Marine's innovative technologies are enabling scientific discoveries and commercial tasks in the world's oceans and waterways. On this episode, we're speaking with Michael Redmayne, the U.S. sales manager for Teledyne Keras, a marine geospatial software company. Michael is an IHO Category A hydrographic surveyor with 18 years of experience in various roles within the hydrographic community. When we caught up with Michael last fall, he sat down to speak with us about a new product that was about to be released on the market, utilizing artificial intelligence to process survey data. So here's Michael Redmayne with the host of Marine Tech Talk, Melissa Rossi. Michael, you are a sister Teledyne company, as we like to call you. Uh, you do something totally different, but in the marine space as well. So could you please tell us what you do at Teledyne Karras and what Teledyne Karras does? Okay. So Teledyne Karras, we're a, a marine geospatial software company. Um, our, our primary work is with uh, we're dealing with marine geospatial data, uh, taking what we, we like to call ping to chart. So we take the data that comes from the sensors that Teledyne uh, Marine works with quite a lot, uh, among others, and we will pull that data through process it and then uh, uh, and then create products from that so uh, uh, the, the typical end product for the majority of our customers would be a nautical chart um, but also under the marine spatial data infrastructure approach uh, there are multiple other products we can generate as well so Teleland Karras is based up in New Brunswick in Canada uh, we've been around uh, for around 40 years now mm. um, so uh, yeah we've been we've been doing this a while and, and most of that time it's been it's been involved with uh, with the maritime sphere within the geospatial software world. Okay. So I understand that Teledyne Keras just came out with a new piece of software that's a little bit different and incorporates AI, which I get it, a big buzzword, right? AI or machine learning. How is Teledyne Keras using machine learning in their product? Yes, you're right. It, it certainly is a, a buzzword that uh, we hear flying around quite a bit. Um, but it's something that we've uh, we've been looking at for uh, for around a couple of years now. Uh, what we at, at Teledyne Caris, our real push has been to help automate the the processing of uh, of data. So you've got these sensors out there, very good sensors that are that are gathering uh, quite a lot of data. You know, maybe up to 512 pings, per, sorry, 512 soundings per ping, um, which uh, you know maybe maybe pinging at 10 or 20 hertz. So you can imagine over the course of a day that that creates a lot of data that then needs to be analyzed and, uh, and, and to, to be passed through the workflow to, to generate the product at the back end. So our focus really for the last couple of years has been turn, trying to automate that process, try to remove uh, the need for a, for a human to really be sitting and, and clicking through uh, what can be quite a mundane task. Um, so we've, we've achieved quite a bit of that in our latest release. We have uh, the ability to now build process models uh, depending on the type of workflow that you want to approach. Um, these can then be logged and then just run with a single click. But one of the biggest problems that we find is that uh, despite having that automation, there's still the step uh, of uh, actually going through and manually dock killing, as, as we used to call it. Uh, going through finding those, those fish in the water column, those uh, when you drive through uh, someone else's wake, uh, or if you get aeration over your sonar, um, they, you know, this, this is a problem. It's something that, that you've got to, it's very manually intensive to go through and, and, and clean that data. So you, you manually have to clean the data. Yeah, traditionally, I think most uh, most hydrographic surveyors are, are, are well aware that their first job it's all, it always seems to be the, the the kind of the junior guys that end up doing it. Uh, but yeah, their their job is to sit there and it's to go through line by line or, or swath by swath and uh, and reject those soundings that don't look like they should they, that they belong. On an average, how long does that cleaning up the data typically take? So it, uh, uh, it varies, and it very much varies on, on the quality of, of the data. Uh, certainly, from speaking from my experience uh, many, many years ago, uh, that, you know, the, the, the ratios are almost one-to-one. -one. Uh, so for every hour of hydrographic survey, you would have an hour of, of processing. Wow. Um, that was you know, back in the, in the dark ages and the, the uh, early days of, of multi-beam. I think we brought that ratio down, and again, it very much depends on the environment and the type of sonar that you're using. We brought that ratio very much down to maybe an hour to 20 minutes of processing, would, I would say, would pretty much be on average. 
Um, but yeah, that dot killing is still is a real, real manually intensive process and uh, uh, pretty, pretty painful for the folks that have to do it. Yeah. So now with the new product, how does that work? So the new product, what we did is we identified that the, you know the dot killing was the major blockage on on, on getting this data processed. Um, so that works through uh, through a, a, a three dimensional. Uh, what what and, and uh, I'm going to lose my listeners on on saying this, but uh, <laughs> it's a three dimensional convolutional neural network. Uh, so please don't don't tune out at that point. Um, uh, what it essentially is is it's using a form of artificial intelligence, and and uh, uh, actually that that type of artificial intelligence is being used every day whenever you do a Google search. Uh, whenever you go on Facebook and it, and, it, and it automatically tags you in that embarrassing picture. Um, and w- essentially what it does is it, it, it's a trained model. Uh, so you feed the, uh, once, you've, once you've developed the framework for it, you feed it a lot of hydrographic data that has been processed, that's been processed by, by a person. Uh, and it's important to make sure that's been processed very, very well. The, the, uh, the model will then learn based on on that data, it will say, right, well, you know, th- th- here I, I'm now understanding uh, why certain data is rejected and certain data is, is maintained. So you're actually feeding them the before and after. So the before it's been cleaned and then the after it's been cleaned so they can do it, so the artificial intelligence can do a comparison, basically. Absolutely, yes, okay. yes. It can, it can understand what would a human do in most cases. So the more data you feed it, the better it gets. And uh, uh, we're very lucky at Caris that we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of data. We have a lot of bad data that customers have sent to us over the last forty years. <laughs> um, so we fed it, uh, you know, a, a lot of data to really train it up and make it as robust as possible. Now, once it understands and once it, it's been it's been trained up, and that requires quite a quite an intensive uh, uh, process in, in a very uh, very powerful computer that we have uh, at our at our main office. But once it's trained, um, it, you then get this trained model that, that can be applied to a, a new data set. Uh, so what the AI will do is it will identify patterns. Um, so when you upload a, just a data set that hasn't been cleaned whatsoever, uh, it will identify certain patterns within it, uh, and then it will automatically reject those uh, the, the sort of thing that a human would sit down and do uh, for you. And the great part of that is it can be built into a process where it's a single click and you don't have to worry about it. Wow. Um, we're certainly not saying it's a 100% solution. Uh, I, I would never advise people not to check their data, right. but, um, uh, but it certainly does remove a lot of that manual button clicking. So could you give us a comparison if you were to take, uh, take the example of one type of data that you would have to do manually and then contrast it to this product? What's the time savings there? Absolutely. So we we've got some various examples of uh, of different data sets, and obviously not not all data sets are created right. equal. Um, but we uh, for for an average user, uh, you know, going back to my my earlier uh, sort of um, estimation of, of one hour of, of of acquisition to twenty minutes of processing, you know, using a manual method, um, using this method using AI, uh, we could bring that down for, to about six minutes. Uh, so wow. it's a it's that's a, significant. Yeah, absolutely. It's about a about a seventy five percent time savings, uh, and of course it adds up. You know, not every survey is necessarily an hour. Uh, some some folks are out surveying twenty four seven, so it really does help clear that that data backlog that a lot of folks do have. What are all those junior people going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, yes. They they won't get the trial by fire that the rest of us had, um, but. Uh, but yeah, I mean, again, the focus is a lot of folks said when we when we looked at, at automation, uh, there was a fear that that uh, you know that, that we're, we're we're taking jobs away from folks. But actually, what we're trying to do is get a, get away from the monotony. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the dot killing is 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 really monotonous. Uh, you know, we're, we're trying to automate things in a way so that you can focus on on the difficult things. Uh, you know, d- gathering hydrographic data at sea is difficult. There's a there's a lot of moving parts that can go wrong. Uh, so we want to free those folks up to, to to figure that stuff out rather than just button clicking. Uh, and the way that the the way that we're looking to deploy it uh, is it will be uh, it's part of our of our hips and sips package, uh, which is our, our data processing package, which has been around for for a long time. Um, uh, but what's going the way that it will work is essentially your data will be um, you 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 select the the AI tool or whatever it will be called. And it will send that data up to to a cloud service, and actually the the data processing will happen in the cloud, and then be sent down again. Again, realize cloud is another buzzword, but uh, (laughs) 
Um, part of the reason why we're doing that, we actually we actually strip all the metadata off uh, so that the, there's very little that is sent up there and sent back. Um, but part of the reason we're taking that approach is that the way AI works um, is it's a fairly intensive uh, GPU process. Uh, so uh, a lot of PCs don't necessarily have the GPU to, to run it. Um, uh, although in the future, we will be releasing an on-premise version which, uh, which folks will be able to use uh, in, in remote places where they don't have access to the cloud. Right. Uh, so first stage, uh, cloud deployment. Second stage will be uh, on-premise. If people want to learn more about this particular piece of software, how do they find out more? Um, so please go on to uh, uh, karis.com or telllinecaris.com, uh, our website. Uh, there's there's uh, all, all the ways of getting hold of us uh, uh, through there. Um, you can upload a you know upload a, a, a an inquiry form or or pick up the phone and give us a call. Great, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to the release of your new product. I appreciate it. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks for listening to the Marine Tech Talk podcast. Teledyne Keras' new product was released in January 2020 under the product named Mira AI Sonar Noise Classifier. To find out more about what Mira AI can do for your data, please visit www.teledynecaris.com and search for Keras Mira AI. Also, check the Marine Tech Talk podcast website for a link to a published article that appeared just this month in Hydro International. If you have any questions or comments about this show, you can email host Melissa Rossi at Marine Tech Talk at Teledyne.com. If you like this podcast, please make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're hearing this show. That way, you'll never miss an episode. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you again next time.